What's up, y'all? Happy Monday! Welcome back to Chill to Action here on the Call to Action Network. You know me. It's your girl, Danielle, here with my favorite co-host, Mr. Paul Denuzio. It's me. It's me. It's PLD. I am excited to talk Star Wars, as always, amongst other things. So happy to be here. Yes, and I'm very excited to talk about Game of Thrones with the one, the only, your squad leader, Mr. Andres Cabrera. Hola, yeah, hola. squad leader ace. No one gets that reference. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually right behind me. Uh, it's actually an Attack on Titan reference uh, for anyone who's a, a real nerd, uh, an anime nerd like me. <laughs> that actually, my oldest loves Attack on Titan. They've been trying oh, to get so good. I'd have to watch it at some point soon because uh, they keep telling me to watch it. I'm like, all right, well, I, I find time to watch. I got all the other stuff going on, but I do do want to watch it. So, yeah, and I'm anime adjacent. I'm there, but I'm not fully there. I get it. Yeah, <laughs> totally get it. Yeah. No judgment on my part. There you go. <laughs> Ace, thank you so much for hanging out with us on this Monday night. We really appreciate it. And as always, Ace, we always like to start with the same question. So, of course, what got you into the showdown? Ooh, uh, I was kind of there. I mean, I wasn't there in the conception of it. Uh, I was almost there in the conception of it. Um, I come from the intern Schmoes days. Uh, I was the intern right after Cody Hall, uh, right. for anyone who needs a reference for that. We were at the After Bus studio. So obviously I was a fan of the Schmoes beforehand and I met them at Stan Lee's Comic-Con back when it was called Stan Lee's Kamikaze. Uh, back in 2014, literally like a couple weeks after I moved to LA, uh, I moved to LA in 2014. And like a few weeks later, I was like, I got to go to their panel. And I happened to go to their panel. I met them all. I hanged out with them. And I was like, hey, if you guys ever need anything, I'm a production guy. This is kind of what I do now. This is what I do for a living. So if you guys never need any help, I'm there. And sure enough, uh, Christian Rubacaba Copster hit me up. Uh, I believe that uh, winter, and then by January, I was officially a member of the squad, the team of the Schmo. So, yeah, I've been there for a while, I, and I think a lot of people who are fans of Schmo down now don't really know that, which is kind of refreshing to be like, "Hey guys, I was there too. Do you guys remember? No? <laughs> cool. <laughs> well, no. some do. Some remember yeah. his turns. That's good. There you go. There you go. Good time. <laughs> And Jillian Comic Con 2014, first con for Jillian. Oh, you go. No way. Love Jillian in there. Nice. Well, let's see what made you decide to actually throw your hat in the ring and say, I'm going to compete in this thing. I want to play in this thing now. Oh, yeah. I mean, to be fair, I was kind of thrown into it. <laughs> okay. uh, our, my first match, I don't really count it in my opinion, but obviously other people do, and you guys probably do, was uh, it was me, Cody, and Copster versus Dan and Riley. Uh, it was supposed to be like a, a monsters versus nobodies match. Uh, and it was kind of unfair. <laughs> okay. Especially I mean, knowing now. Competition right there. <laughs> like, you're facing off against Riley and Dan Merle, two of like the goats in the Schmodown. And this is my first official match, and it was a handicap match, so it was three on two, uh, but we still lost pretty bad. But after that, I've I've told Christian beforehand that I've wanted to do inner geekdom because that's something that I'm actually am. I don't know. I'm actually a geek. I'm an outer geek. Um, so I was like, I can maybe keep up with that. I'm not sure about singles because there's a lot of rom-com stuff on there, which is something that I have zero knowledge on. <laughs> Uh, but I've always kind of wanted to do it. And then, yeah, just this last couple months, you guys saw that destruction that took place. <laughs> well, I mean, the debut in the Inner Geekdom you're looking for, I guess yeah. that's what I'm just going to say. <laughs> and to, to be fair, Robert Parker is a, a freak of nature in, in the Schmodown. So <laughs> it was that's almost right. an unfair advantage. That's that's kind of what I said. I was yeah. like, really? Robert Parker is my first ever <laughs> match? Great. This is so cool. I love it. <laughs> well, this is bringing up something. I guess you have something you can announce. Ooh. Oh, I can? That's I, I don't... That's Winston. So is Winston. it? Yeah, Winston <laughs> is the new four. So it seems like we got a scoop here on Chill to Action, y'all. I'm so afraid because I'm afraid <laughs> if someone like took over his account, I'm going to be like thrown somewhere to like the Schmodown pit of hell. Um... <laughs> I'm gonna yes. Bet. Go ahead. Go ahead and say it. Star Wars. 
tournament. Yes. You're in the yes. Star Wars tournament. You are the Star Okay, so I can play. I said that Ace is going to be the Star Wars. All right, that's great. That's actually going to be our question later on. We're going to lead into that eventually because we looked at the roster, looked at Swag, like that was the one question we had was who was going to be the Star Wars from Swag. And I had heard at one point that you had said you didn't want to potentially. Is that, is that true? At some point, were you hesitant about it? I maybe did I say that? I don't. I I don't remember. But but if I did, I'm wrong. <laughs> okay. I'm in. I I really want. I, I want to do this honestly, and it's something that not just to show my knowledge, but also to win. If I'm being real, like right. I know that's kind of what everyone is about. And now I'm, I, I know who I'm up against as far as like, who's everyone else. But my thing is like, I think I can beat him. Give me, okay. give me, give me, give me some prep time. And I, I, I can surprise people. I really feel like I, I can. All so, right. The brackets up. Who, who, who are you playing then? I guess the bracket was released. Sean Sullivan saying the brackets up. I didn't get a chance to see it yet. I have not had a chance to see that either, Sean. So I think we're breaking news here. I, I haven't seen it either. I have no idea. Yep, oh, I guess yep, there you go. It. Josh Alvin saying you're playing Josh Cavado. Interesting. Oh, Where's this bracket at? <laughs> I kind of want to see it right now. I guess Kelsey, Kelsey it tells us it's on Twitter. Kelsey, our lovely Kelsey is hanging out in the background. So make sure you give her a big shout out to everyone in the chat. Thank you, Kelsey, so much. But she just informed us that it's somewhere on Twitter. So okay, all right. we Ooh. have been busy. There has been a lot of Schmodown news going on today. Yeah. It has been a full day of Schmodown. I woke up this morning just to watch SEN and get all of that information. So it's been it's been a day. It's been a news day. So I'm super pumped, Ace, to know that you are Swag's official Star Wars player. That's going to be amazing and fun. And that was my prediction. It was. It was definitely all of our <laughs> Yeah, I see it now, by the way, and I'm just pulling it up. But yeah, I, apparently I'm in the playing game. Like I said, I'm not just doing this for fun. I know a lot of people kind of gave me crap for that. Uh, I want to win. And especially when I'm representing someone like Winston Marshall, like Flag, like a faction like that, that, that really is, you feel like you, you, you need to win, not only for yourself, but to, to prove to your team and to support your team, really, because that's the best way you can show them love is to rack up some wins. Absolutely. Man, I'm super excited about that. Swag has been my, my personal favorite faction. I've been behind it since day one, drip, drip, all of that good stuff. So to hear you announced uh, at, to be a part of Swag it was really nice. And then uh, you're with your, uh, your podcast mate. Mr. RB3 in there. How did you one feel? And one of them, yes. And now your other one is in the league also. How did you feel initially when you got drafted? Uh, I I felt excited. Honestly, out of everyone who drafted me, obviously there's a lot of great managers out there and I'm friends with a couple of them, but I was so happy it was Winston and I was so happy I got to be there with RB3, uh, who's obviously been a homie of mine for a couple of years now. And obviously we have a podcast together. Um, but to me, knowing that I was on a faction like Winston, knowing that I was a part of it, just hearing all the great things I've heard about him because I haven't officially met, I hadn't officially met him uh, during the draft. So when that happened, I was like, this is perfect. Uh, this is the kind of crew I want to be with. Anyone who's like listening to hip hop on the way to the ring, like that's that's my team right there. And that's how RB3 and I bonded too. So that's why I was like, all right, it's the hip hop crew right here. I'm, I'm in. I love it. That's awesome. That's what uh, I was there for. You know, interestingly enough, that you mentioned your podcast, obviously, RB3 is on swag. Sabrina made up her mind today and yeah. announced that she was not going to be on swag like many had predicted. Yeah. How did that go? Was there any behind the scenes? Did you push her in any direction? Was there any talk between you two about where she should go? Uh, obviously, it's her decision. Uh, we, we did talk about it, actually, and beforehand. And I obviously, I, I gave my best pitch I could for swag. Uh, RB3 and I did, but eventually it's up to her decision. But um, knowing that she went with Finstock is actually, it's its not super shocking to me um, just because I've known Tom. I call him Tom. I'm supposed to call him <laughs> Finstock. I've known <laughs> Finstock for years, like years. Uh, I know him pretty freaking well, and I know he's a really smart guy. I know a lot of people might be shocked by me saying that, but he's a smart guy. Um, so I'm not super surprised that she went with Finstock. He is kind of the definition of idiot savant, really. <laughs> so I think we definitely mentioned that that was a decent decent pull by him as well. 
Um, but now, now that we've mentioned your podcast, we should talk about so SEN Live. We always hear about how we should be subscribing to the Meaning of Podcast. Yeah. So for those who don't know exactly what to talk about, they think of it's just the joke from SEN. Tell us about that. Tell us about what, what you do with our right there. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, the Meaning of Podcast is funny enough coming from back when we were on Schmoes. We wanted to do a podcast that represented RB3 and I. And we felt like, hey, this is an opportunity for us to kind of branch out and do our own thing, but still have the same theme from Schmoes. And we, we actually kept it on the Schmoes network when that was a thing back in the day. Um, even on the Collider Network, when when that was, uh, we were part of that. Um, so this is a real podcast, guys. It's not just a running joke. Um, we discuss film directors. Uh, my pitch was essentially, let's go through each film director and kind of talk about uh, whether it's social issues, political issues that they want to bring up in each one of their movies. Because after a while, if you watch someone's filmography back to back to back, you start to realize, oh, they're kind of saying the same thing in every single one of their movies. And we're trying to figure that out in each episode. And we're just going through each film, just trying to hit all the beats that the director wants to deliver. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah. So. Very cool. Yeah. You just had uh, Paulo Yama on your last one, correct? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It, I haven't had a chance to listen to it, but I'm looking forward to it. I love to hear Paul's perspective, and I've really enjoyed listening to the three of you, you, RB3, and Sabrina, on on the first cut. Just hearing you all talk about uh, movies is, is very refreshing and super nice. All of y'all are super smart when it comes to movies, so I'm a big fan, man. Oh, thank you, guys. I appreciate that. And obviously, yeah, Sabrina is a part of it, too, and she's she's a great addition to the team. She's a recent addition because RB3 and I have been doing it for like three years now. Mm -hmm. uh, but Sabrina joined us uh, at some point later last year. Uh, she came on and then, yeah, she was she came on right after on SEN, I believe, a couple weeks afterwards. So, yep. yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. There you go, Ferris with Anna. Subscribe to the first cut. Listen to Meaning of. Thank you, Ferris. <laughs> thank you, Ferris. So that's just gonna ask that about Sabrina. How did that how did that come down? Did you approach her? Did she like get involved with you? How did that work out when you decided we're gonna we want to take her on our team and get her involved? Yeah, she was uh she was a friend of RB3's actually. RB3 texted me and he was like, Hey man, I have a friend of mine who wants to kind of help out with the social media aspect of the show and and kind of put into her two cents as far as what what we can do to grow the show. Uh and I was like, dude. I would love to have a a female perspective on the show. I feel like that's something we've been needing for a while. So when I was introduced to her and she came on, I was like, hey, I, you know, why don't you get on the mic? You know, I know you want to be behind the scenes, but this is something that I feel like my thing is like, I don't like being in the room with a person and having a conversation with someone like a Sabrina uh, and not having her, not giving her the opportunity to voice her own opinions. Um, that's the purpose of having someone like that. And I felt like, why just have her behind the scenes when we can have her on the mic and she can give us a different perspective that we might not get. So that's why I was like, hey, let's get on the mic. Let's have you on. And I would love for you to voice your thoughts on every conversation we have. And that's when she became an official part of the team. That's great. I mean, she's great. so much fun to listen to. She's got a great perspective on she it. She does. She's yeah. great. She's yeah, so really. good on the mic. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I'm super pumped to see her in the league. I know that there's a lot of stuff. It, her name is super hot right now. Oh my gosh. It like, is. Her ears must be burning because everyone's been talking about her all day long. And um, it's been a lot of praise. So yeah, she's you, pulled, you pulled a good one, Ace. You pulled a good one. That's the question. I, I You've talked to more than everybody. You think she's ready for the league? You think she's got everything down? Yes, I, I really do feel like this is the kind of girl who takes it seriously. And this is the kind of girl who wants to grow and to learn. And that has really, to me personally, if I'm speaking on the personal, on the real, has showed me personally her knowledge and her skills just over the past few months of knowing her, over the past uh, almost year of knowing her, I've seen that, oh, wow, she's grown so much. Like she just catches on so quick. So that I know that if she's committing to something like a schmodown, then she'll be ready. So I'm sure she's going to impress. Uh, and I know I'm supposed to be biased. I'm supposed to say, no, Finstock's not <laughs> doing good. <laughs> yeah. We're all against the exchange on here, yeah. right? Yes. Kind yeah, of so. okay, really quickly, um, Andres, I know that we talked about this a little bit before we started all of that Spanish and good stuff. So oh, I'm not going to embarrass myself. I know everyone in the chat wants Paul to read this, but what? Andres, if you don't, if you don't mind doing us the honor, if you can or if you would, Ooh, oh, yeah. Oscar Romo, 
Yeah, because I'm the whitest guy here. You don't. Want oh, to look at all these bad white. words, guys. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say this. Um, he says, uh, Oscar Romo says, Que chido tenerte, Andrés. Hay que hablar mucho español para confundir a, Dan a Dani. Que no hubo español, que lástima, y que pues también PLD es el más güero del mundo. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. That was nice. Hard eyes. Call you the yeah. coolest guy ever. That's where we'll go with I'll believe. <laughs> yeah. No, he called you the whitest guy ever, but e either <laughs> way, it works. <laughs> I won't deny that as well. Yeah. yeah. My yeah. favorite part of that is his slang using the K instead of the Q U for K. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I would have totally missed that. Oscar's trying to embarrass me, and I see what you're doing, Oscar. It's fine. <laughs> Yeah, you've wanted to learn Spanish, you know. You I'm, I have Duolingo. I'm trying, okay? I'm trying. Yes. <laughs> You'll get there eventually. Uh, Swaggy Bird is actually back and just wanted to say he was on delay, but he's proud of you to kick some ass and he has all the faith in the world in you. It's a lot of faith. Lot. <laughs> no, but it's warranted. I'm going to win. You're going to win. Well, yeah. let's see. The, here, I can pull this up now for the screen. Let's talk about this. The, the tournament, this is what it was. This is the Ooh. tournament. Um, it's been okay. But... Uh, oh. So, yeah. So, what do you think about that? You got Damon versus Witt, Scrimshaw versus Timolanta, Kelly versus Sullivan. Wow. Papsock versus the winner of you and Josh Gavedo. I don't know much about Josh Gavedo. Do you know anything about him? Uh, if I'm being honest, I don't. I no. don't. I mean, I'm going to take everyone. I, I don't really, I'm a big martial arts fan. And, and the biggest rule of martial arts is never underestimate your opponent. Mm. Um, and that's something that I carry with me. So I'm not going to underestimate him, even though I, I don't know him as much as I do, like an Alex Damon or a Molly or a Scrimshaw or a Ken or uh, Andrew. Like these guys, I do know more, but it doesn't mean that I'm overlooking him at all. Okay. Fair yeah. enough. Fair enough. Very good. I can't wait to that's see that. That's an interesting bracket right there. It Scrimshaw is. against Damon, against Alex Damon. Now we can't just say Damon anymore because now we got oh, both of the Damons in there. Because Damon's not playing. It's Molly oh. Damon versus Adam Witt. It's Joseph Scrimshaw versus yes. Adam Andrew DeMolanta. Oh, I'm sorry. I oh, totally read that wrong. I think I just had the Damon on my brain. Okay. Roxy, Ooh. Roxy had said that she wanted to have Alex Damon play. The, she was going to lay down the belt each, like each play of the tournament, but Christian wouldn't have it. So. That might be good news, considering how much I don't, considering how well, how well he does, pretty much. But you know, speaking of Star Wars, you did have some time on Collider when you actually got to be on Jedi Council. Yes. Talk about your time on that. I mean, love, that's the show. That's the show that brought me to this showdown because uh, I love wow. Star Wars so much. That I found Jedi Council back in the DMC days. Yeah. All the way through. So that was quite a that's quite a legacy that they have there with you, Ken. So how was that? How was being on being on the, the council? <laughs> It was a dream, man. I, I loved it. Obviously, it's a big change going from all the hands and all the hosts that have been on there before. Uh, so I had some major shoes to fill. And to be honest, I was slightly intimidated at first. Um, obviously, my two co-hosts are the best of the best. Uh, Emma Fife and Ken are like two of my favorite people already. Mm -hmm. We were already friends beforehand. I've known Emma forever. And I, uh, I did a bunch of Comic Cons with her, too. So we're very familiar with each other's voices. Shout okay. out to Comic-Con 2016 when we did a bunch of videos. Um, <laughs> that was a lot of fun, but I knew her and I knew her knowledge and I knew her passion. That's my favorite part of Emma is her passion for Star Wars because we all bring our different perspective. Um, but it was great, man. Obviously it was, it was a short lived uh, opportunity, uh, but I loved every minute of it, man. And, and it's really something that talking about a passion of mine like Star Wars was just a joy. Uh. You know, I tell you, man, you get like you said, it was a little bit at the end there, but you know, even being on it with all that legacy, it's just it's a great time, sure. It's a dream come true. Uh, Star Wars, is, I love the fact that you guys are all so positive about it, generally speaking. I mean, there's so yes. much toxicity in the fandom here that we don't need it anymore. If you don't like something, it's fine, but like, let's just talk about what you do love. Yeah, you know I mean, why bring up stuff you don't love? Um, let's see, also, and speaking of Star Wars, you did have a recent article you're writing for Geeks of Color. Okay. And I did check out your uh, top 10 characters of the modern Star Wars era. You should pick that out. Uh, you had quite a list, like quite a good list there. I was, uh, Paul was very you. impressed. We talked Thank about you. Paul was very impressed. impressed Thanks for checking that out, man. I did. I linked this slide in there, number six there. Doc, I won't, I won't spoil all. You should go read it. You also go read it yourself. Uh, Dr. Afra in there is number six. I think that's a great character. Uh, right? 
<laughs> I would love to see her and make the jump to a different medium. Don't you? Think yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you guys don't know who that is. I try to tell Danielle about that, or she's like, I don't know who that is. I'm like, it's basically like if you take Indiana Jones, uh, make her a little more evil. <laughs> well, not evil is not the right word, but a little more selfish. Or something. That's pretty much the root of the comic. It's so different from the rest of the Star Wars universe. That's it, gives it its own unique voice. Yeah, and it fits so well, right? It's different, but it fits. It's almost perfect. Yes. Like, how can there not be a person like Afra inside the Star Wars universe? Like, this is the kind of people and characters we want to see in Star Wars. Exactly. And that, going off what you said, different but similar, it's the only time I've ever seen, a, not the only time, I guess, but one of the few times I've seen a character introduced that is so successful that they can stand up in the realm. She's she's interacting with Vader. She's interacting with all these big wigs of Star Wars, but yet she's holding her own. Usually these characters have to be so separated that they're taken away from everything to make it successful. She's actually up there with them, and she feels like she's been there for years. You feel like she's been there for forever. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, it's uh, I, I love Afra, and I'm so glad that I was able to include her on this list. So Obviously, anyone who hasn't, go check out that list. That's where I won't spoil anymore. That's, that's the only one. Dr. Afro was at six. Everything else, it's up to you to find out. So. <laughs> I'm sure we'll talk about Star Wars later. I love watching people talk about Star Wars. Um, I stayed away from Star Wars for a while because um, the fandom was so toxic at the time. For me, at least, I, I couldn't express anything that I liked about Star Wars without someone completely jumping on me for it. But it, in my opinion, it's completely changed. I've been able to kind of deep dive into it a little bit more, and I, I really appreciate the world, and and I love it. Uh, I love how uh, how wide it is and how inclusive it is and, and everything that's a part of Star Wars right now. So I'm really glad that I'm jumping into it now at this time just because I feel like it, I can appreciate it a little bit differently than when I was younger, like in my early twenties and stuff like that, trying to get into it. So. Yeah. I mean, star Wars is that perfect mythology where anyone can get into it. And yeah, Jakob okay. is right. I'm Absolutely. very much. <laughs> we all are. Yeah. He does that. The question is the guy who just watched all the clone wars. I'll let you know. He actually watched all the clone wars. Nice. Like, so he did. Try to point it out to us. <laughs> yeah. He's a nerd too. He's just trying to talk some shit. Yeah. Uh, clone wars is so good. I love clone wars. <sighs> Wasn't that finale? The the most fitting finale you could ever <laughs> Yes, yes. Uh, everyone was freaking out about it, but with good reason. Yes. Uh, I've openly talked about my love for Maul. Uh, it's a character that I literally fell in love with when I was a kid watching the 1999 premiere of A Phantom Menace. Uh, it was truly a special moment being introduced to that character. And now how far he's come 21 years later, it's incredible. I, I, you speak my language. Uh, Filoni, for example, this is, has his knack of doing it. You take a character like Maul, who was awesome in episode one in Karabi. He had a great, but it was more flashy, not much substance. And he's added so much depth. And of course, with not even that many episodes, a handful of episodes here and there. And he's so much of a different character now. Same thing with Ahsoka. You open up her, her first movie, the Clone Wars movie, she was terrible. She was like annoying. No one really liked her. But now she's like one of my favorite Star Wars characters of all time. <laughs> That's only worked. It's amazing how much depth he's he engaged with these characters. Uh, yeah. It, it, it all, oh, go ahead, Danielle. No, you go, you go. Well, well, my thing is it has a lot to do with time, right? We see how much time we spent with these characters and how each season is able to develop them and to grow them as a character. That's the great part of television, right? Where if we're introduced to someone like Amal or like an Anakin in the prequels, we get to explore so much more of his character inside Clone Wars. Mm -hmm. So much so. Uh, and and Rebels, so you get to get us a little and, bit off. Oh, of Rebels. Oh. I could have made a top 10 list of just rebels. And that's why I don't know if you noticed in my list. I was like, oh, I, I want to include every single rebels character in there because I adore rebels. I love it so much. And that's not rebels I want is my next adventure. I haven't watched anything from rebels yet. And that's I just finished Clone Wars. So now I'm going to get into rebels in just a bit. Yeah. It's so good. You yeah. know what? I'm excited to, to get more Ahsoka stuff because Ahsoka was a character that I had heard about uh, before I watched Clone Wars. And I, I knew that that, that was going to be a character that I would just love. And and I watched it and I did. I fell in love with Ahsoka. So I'm really excited to see a, a little bit more of that journey. I'm not going to lie. I did a, a big YouTube dive and I've already kind of spoiled myself with Rebels. <laughs> Sometimes you can't help it. Yeah, you know I can't help it. 
since we're talking to Star Wars, we should pop in the question that we've had recently. You know, we have Mandalorians coming in, and especially you're getting Boba Fett, maybe getting Tamira Morrison coming in. Now, the question was, is it Boba Fett or is it Rex? Because somebody, Jeremiah Morrison, is going to be Rex. Uh, Captain Rex, what do you think? Can I say, why not both? <laughs> I said live today. I said live today. Christian said that. I said the chat said it. He kind of went, that's a good idea. It's perfect. Get us both. It's a perfect timing. You have Boba Fett alive at that time. You got Rex a little bit older. It would be great. Anything you can get more. more both those characters could be fun. I, I, I really hope, and I know this is me being a biased animated show fan, but I hope, and I've been saying, I said it on council, I, I really hope we get to have more characters that we watched on Clone Wars, on Rebels, be inside this amazing live action Star Wars show. Like, let's have, obviously you saw my list, but let's have Sabine. My God, wouldn't it be amazing to see a live action Sabine? That would murder me. It's got to be headed in that way, don't you think? Yes. It's just the way it's going, it's just set up perfectly that she's ready to be in that live action as well. Um, and it's funny, it, to me, it's kind of mirroring what I hope for Dave Filoni. You got the animated world, animated verse, they're going to come to live action. Dave Filoni, I'm hoping Dave Filoni, I mean, if it's with John Favreau or not, slides up maybe into that creative head position of, at Lucasfilm. Kathy, Kathy Kennedy is a great producer, lover, like she's done great work. Have her be in charge of that business side and let Filoni and Favreau just run that creative side. Like the Kevin Feige of the Star Wars, of the Lucasfilmers. I think that'd be the way to go for me. Why, like, why did we let Paul start talking about Star Wars? I, 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 I'm well, totally interviewing you and I just started talking about Star Wars. Yeah, no, I mean, it's interesting, right? Because that, that's what a lot of people have been saying. But at the same time, if you really think about it, she is responsible for the Mandalorian. Like, it, that's kind of what I said on council. I was like, hey, guys, this is a Kathleen Kennedy production, and you guys are eating it up. She's the one who hired Favreau and Filoni to be on the show. Oh, I, no, <laughs> yeah. let, me, let me just point, point out, I am not knocking Kathleen Kennedy at all. At all. Yes. I, definitely she's in charge of that. I just think that I, just love, I would love to see Favreau and Filoni be more in charge of just, just the creative aspect of it. Sure. They know Star Wars so well. Work with Kathleen Kennedy. Let her, let her be really hands-on with it. Just have it because they just Mandalorian is show proof that they to have the, their fingers in the pulse of what star what makes it Star Wars in a way, and I love the sequel trilogy too. I'm not, I'm not one of those people who hates the, anything about it. I just love Filoni so much that I think that he is the perfect guy for the role. Yeah, yeah, he's great, and obviously everything he's done so far has been pretty impressive. So yeah. I can't argue with that. Right, absolutely. So. Have you watched um, the Mandalorian documentary and and that everyone's talking about the Dave Filoni Duel of the Fates <sighs> clip out? Yeah, I saw the two episodes, and obviously that everyone clipped that out. I wish I was smart enough to be like, hey, I'll clip this out. Because um, everyone was like, oh, man, I've never heard this. And I'm like, Disney Plus, it's on there. Um, but yeah, everything he said is spot on. And it, and it kind of is like a, a, a battle cry for us prequel fans or prequelists. Um, at, because I've also been on Force Center. Shout out to Force Center. Um, I consider it my second star wars home even though i'm not part of the trio the holy trio right um i consider myself the fourth wheel in that sometimes um but either way everything he said is what i've been saying what scrimshaw's been saying what a lot of us have been saying about the prequels it's like people forget how much this meant on on just an aspect of storytelling that it was just a, a different level that george lucas was reaching by the way he was telling each and every one of these jedi stories it's incredible i mean everything he said i was like yeah I've yeah. been saying that, but no one listens to me. <laughs> yeah. I love that the direct other directors kind of like were just in awe, just like watching them. And at the end, they're kind of like, oh, did I go too far? And they're all like, no, you didn't. That was that was perfect. That was right on <laughs> exactly what we needed. Yeah, yeah. I'm a I'm a big time crier. So I heard that speech and I was just in in tears after after it. And I loved every second of it. It it really helped me as someone who's who hasn't been into Star Wars for that long, really, really look at it from that type of perspective and kind of understand that part of that fight between Qui-Gon Jinn and Darth Maul. So that it's, was really fun for me as like as a newer newcomer into the Star Wars universe. It's the perfect it's the perfect lightsaber battle. I, I still rank it as number one. I, I did a top five lightsaber fights with uh, on Force Center I believe a year and a half ago or two years ago. Uh, and I put that as my number one for many reasons, obviously the choreography and all that, but everything Filoni said is also why I put it up there because how much it meant. Uh, but can I can I give a quick shout out just because you mentioned gallery 
Go to ahead. John Favreau's quote right after that, or maybe it was right before that, when he talked about the idea of what Star Wars represents, because it's something that, again, I said on council a million times, and it's something that I talked to uh, JTE about, shout out to JTE, um, when I went on his show debating the sequel trilogy, because he was very much anti-sequel trilogy, and I was like, everything Favreau said in that quote, I, I obviously I can't pull it out of my head completely, but he basically says Star Wars is supposed to be stories of inspiration for children. It's yes. supposed to be a way to introduce these themes and metaphors uh, uh, of discrimination, of hate, of good and evil, of family to younger people. And that's what Star Wars has always been. It's mythology for young people to kind of grow up with these characters. And this is how they learn these life lessons. And I'm like, thank you. <laughs> Again, I've been saying that forever that I really feel like people miss the mark if they're paying too much attention to like a tiny little plot hole or something. And I'm like, dude, you're missing the point. Right. The point is look at this character of Ray and look what she's doing. Look who she is, where she's come from and what she has accomplished. And look how much that can mean to so many little kids, little girls, little boys around the world, you can't take that away. No matter no matter how much you hate it, you just can't take away the greatness of this character and of this story about her. That's exactly it. And you know, Dave Filoni said it also because he quoted George. What George has still said to this day, even though he's not there anymore, George will come in and say, "Make sure you make the stories hopeful. Give the kids something to hope for." Oh, I love that. Because that's what it's all about. It's a positive thing. And that, that's what makes me mad because the story is so positive in general. And yet the fandom is not positive anymore. And it's like, where did you, where did you lose that? What, what did you lose? It's fine uh, with yourself. I know all about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on Star Wars Twitter and I was on a show where a lot of people were very much against what I was saying. And I was just like, I like it. I, I enjoy it. Uh, and I think that's kind of, it's going to be my perspective pretty much for every Star Wars thing. It's not necessarily you know, being a, a, a just a, a blind fan or something. It's more about taking at the taking the core of every movie of every story that the Star Wars group wants to tell. And if the core is good and it's solid, then I will appreciate it and I will probably love it too. Well, I'm gonna point this out really quickly from the chat. Shantri Dandapani is up in here. Hey. Hey. Hey, some hey. people regretted Star Wars deep cuts after this interview. Let's bulldoze through this Twitch tournament. Oh. Yeah, I, I have to give another, obviously, shout out to Shandrew as well, who's a, a boss and, and a great uh, teammate to have in swag. He's actually really, really cool uh, and is always super supportive and always wants to help me out and does help me out. So, And a yeah. pretty good dancer. I was about to say, did he his dancing moves, his flossing moves at all? Are you gonna, gonna that? <laughs> did, you guys saw that? That uh, I I texted Shandrew. I was like with, with Smets in uh in Shandrew that promo. I was freaking out. Obviously, I know he was a dancer, but the way he was able to balance the the flow of like I'm a fun dancer kid and I will also beat you in movie trivia was just perfect. I thought it was the best promo I've ever seen. I the it. better was the sky button when they did it after they did the black and white version of it. They took a slow mo over. Yeah. That was so cool. That's so good. <laughs> it That's was like, great. Such a, a swag thing to do. And I loved it. I, did, I thought it really embodied your faction. And, and it just, I love that whole thing from start to finish. Well, I told, I told Chandra, it was very anime. I don't know. I, obviously you guys don't watch anime, but it's very like, like the fun go lucky kid from My Hero Academia, there's a there's an episode about it, uh, a couple episodes where he's all nice and super funny and wants to be your friend, and then on the corner he's like, "I'm gonna kill this guy, I'm gonna beat him in this battle," and I'm just like, "That's kind of it's very over the top, like you know, putting an exterior of this fun go lucky guy, but at the same time being a killer." But I told Paul before, whenever we were trying to like prep for for this episode, I was like, I, if we don't watch anime, I'll probably watch like an episode of of Avatar just to get some sort of idea. And I didn't, and I'm sorry. <laughs> well, it's coming. Uh, it's coming out on Netflix, or it is out on Netflix. Yes, it is. Yeah. I believe it's out. on Netflix already. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I know that I had heard that, and that was why I was like, I'll watch Avatar because it's easy access right there. It is. My, my kids have also started pushing, trying to push me that because they're they know I'm a geek too. But for whatever reason, I never got to that. My my oldest. 
she's a huge anime person. She lo they love that. She goes all cosplaying and all sorts of things. And she's been trying to get me into a few years, but I will. I will sit down and watch a few with her because everybody keeps pushing me towards that direction. So, <laughs> so how did like like I gotta, I gotta ask about being Star Wars or how did you get into Star Wars in the first place? Like, where was your introduction? Ooh. To the best? Yeah, um, it started with the VHS uh, VHS re-releases of the original trilogy. I believe it was 96, um, but my dad actually was a fan of it, and he introduced me through that. And after that, I don't know if people remember 1996, but a lot of people weren't born in 1996. But after that, there was this release of Star Wars action figures and Star Wars commercials and everything centered around the re-release. So I got into the original trilogy based off that. And then, as I said before, 1999, I actually went to the midnight premiere of my town's uh, premiere of The Phantom Menace. Like, it was actually midnight, which is incredible. Um, and I was a little kid, which was like the latest I've ever stayed up, uh, which was even better because I felt like I was rebelling. Uh, and at the same time, it introduced me to this new uh, Star Wars, which was the Darth Maul, Anakin Skywalker, Padme. Absolutely. That's great. That's great. It's funny. Like, you're making me feel old, though, of course, because I went to the I, I went to the Phantom Menace premiere. I actually slept over the night before to get tickets. But I was like in college at that point, <laughs> out, just out of college, actually, maybe even. But that's that's great that you had that kind of experience as your first thing, because there's nothing like Star Wars in the theater. Nothing like Star Wars in the theater. Nothing like Star Wars opening night. I mean, obviously, I, you guys, I don't know if, obviously, you did the sequel trilogy, but The Force Awakens, for example, I did the same thing. <laughs> like, I, I took the day off of work, and I, I stayed on that. I was the first one in line. Uh, I, I literally spent the entire day in line. It was probably like 14 hours in line or 16 I hours. Mean, um and that was the Force Awakens. So <laughs> I was a conscious adult doing that, not a little kid. Exactly. So, yeah. Vanessa, you just did. Uh, you just did a podcast, and I can't remember the name of the podcast where you actually talk about Latin representation in Star Wars. I haven't had a chance to listen to it, but I'm very, very much looking forward to listening to that. Do you, can you touch on that at all, really quickly? Oh yeah, it's called the Octo Podcast. Shout out to Alden Diaz. He's also a Schmeldown fan, so I'm sure you guys will see him around. But he asked me to be on, and we talked about how, first of all, just in general, my kind of passion of promoting Latin representation in front of the camera more often in Hollywood and how people really overlook that, even though we're 25% of the box office, which makes us the biggest minority group inside America to watch movies in general. Like Latinos watch a lot of movies and people yeah. kind of forget that. Yeah. And it's, it's the idea of how Lucasfilm has almost put it upon themselves to put a Latin character in every single one of their major pictures and major movies. I mean, we have it with, with Pedro Pascal and the Mandalorian, Oscar Isaac, Benicio del Toro, Cassie Nandor with Diego Luna. This is something that after a while, you're like, wait a minute, there's a trend here and it's a positive trend. They're kind of going out of their way to say, hey, if Hollywood doesn't want to do it, we'll do it. We'll be the one to make franchises centered around Latin characters. Have you seen the uh, the little interviews with um, Oscar Isaac and I, I'm pretty sure it's Diego Luna who do like little interviews together? No, together. Yes, I mean, it might be. It's Oscar Isaac and and someone else. Now, now I feel like I'm not 100 percent sure if it's Diego Luna. Um, it might be someone else. The the chat might be able to tell me. But anyways, watching them two together, watching these two Latin men together, just kind of talk Spanish to each other and just kind of riff off each other is so beautiful to see. I love it. Yeah. No. Oh, it might have been for um, it was for that uh Ben Affleck movie, right on Netflix. Oh, um. Frontier? Triple Show Frontier. Frontier. Right. Yeah, because they were both in that movie. So I think it was yeah. promo for that movie. That's right. That was a much better movie than it had any right to be. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, mine is my favorite is still Diego Luna talking about Jabba the Hutt. I tweeted about that <laughs> when that was a big thing. And he's always so obsessed with Jabba. I don't know if you've seen this, Danielle. I have not. Um, I want it. It's incredible. That. It's incredible. I, I'll show you afterwards, but it's really, uh, it's essentially. A, a, a clip out of every time he mentions Jabba the Hutt and how obsessed he is with him. Uh, and he pronounces it Yawa, which is the correct, correct Yaba, pronunciation Yaba. Oh my God. because of the J, Yawa. Yeah. Oh. And he's just like, he's like, out of any Star Wars character, who do you want to meet? He's like, 
I, I just want to meet Yawa, man. You know, he's the best. Like, I like how he's big and he's like a slut. Like, he just goes off in every single interview and it's incredible. Like, he's genuinely like the biggest Jabba the Hutt fan I've ever met or seen. Yeah, I'm going to have to hear this for sure. Well, maybe his, his dreams can come true. Maybe Jabba will appear in, a, in the Cast of Andor series. He can make that work, right? Right? Uh, that would be perfect. It would make his dream come true, literally. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And yeah, it sets up time wise. He's a little rebel guy. He needs to go a little on the outskirts, on the fringes. He might have to deal with a criminal underlord. That could be good. I like that. I like where it's going. I like it. Yeah. I like it. So <laughs> I, I would be remiss if uh, we didn't take a quick second to transition over from Star Wars <laughs> to, to right. from Paul's favorite property. <laughs> To my favorite property. Paul, do I have permission to change the conversation? Because I like the property too. So we're good. I, I, yes. <laughs> you, but I definitely, absolutely, it's tradition for me to take something off of my bookshelf and introduce Mr. George R. R. Martin to the Oh, book. nice. Yes. I uh, Have you read any of the books? I, I think I remember seeing something one time that you were going to pick them up. Yes. Yes, I have. And you've read the entire series? Yes. Ah, yes. man, they're so good. I love the book series. A Song of Ice and Fire is one of my favorite things. I have like everything. I have the maps. I have almost every single property from it. I love the show very, very much. And you, uh, you were on something with Ken, right? Casterly Talk. Yeah, yes. I'm still on that. <laughs> it's still a show. We're still doing it. Uh, right. Casterly Talk is our Game of Thrones podcast. We did it for season eight. Um, our after show. We did it before season eight, actually. We did it after season seven, leading up to season eight. And then obviously we did uh, episode recaps. Uh, it's me, Lon, Rachel, and Ken talk. It's it's the most nerdy. Like if you're reaching, like Jake Yacovet is probably freaking out right now. It's like yeah. nerdy, nerdy, nerdy. When when we did the finale recap and, and, the, and the episode before that, it was like, I was like, this is heaven. Rachel, Lon, Kent, like the most nerdy people I've ever met. And I'm like keeping up with him because I'm a crazy nerd too. It's some, it was I'm, amazing. Oh man, I'm going to have to go back and try to yeah. find those. Cause I know, I know that I missed them. There was a, a big time, like whenever the seasons were on, I was really into a lot of like um, a song of ice and fire book theorists. So I was following a lot of those people and stuff like that. So just yeah. all of that stuff. Do you personally feel like the show ending is going to be similar to the book ending? Yes. And I, I've said that on the podcast before. And I think that's the one mistaken thing that I feel like a lot of people are overlooking. Everyone's Absolutely. like, George is going to fix it. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure that came from George, guys. <laughs> I'm pretty sure everything you saw is going to be somewhat in the book. I'm sure we're going to get different stories, especially the Greyjoy thing oh, might be completely different. Oh my uh, God. It is completely different in the book. So it really is. Uh, and I'm crossing my fingers for for Littlefinger. Obviously, if you've seen any episode or have listened to any episode of Casterly Talk, my Littlefinger love is hardcore. I, I wanted him I, on the throne. I, 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 <laughs> I wanted Littlefinger the whole right? time. On the I was trying to get Littlefinger on the throne the entire time. Me show. too. About Littlefinger, how Littlefinger isn't the bad guy. Littlefinger is actually the good guy in it because he's trying to break down this establishment of hierarchy and this and this rule that that's in there. And he's he's just a, a nobody coming into this world and trying to just completely dismantle it. And and there's a lot of, like a lot of things with Sansa's chapters. Like Sansa is a very unreliable uh, narrator. So there's a lot of twists and turns, like even with the unkiss with with the hound. So you know that that didn't happen. And are we very sure that that creepy shit with Littlefinger did actually happen to Sansa? It's kind of she's an unreliable narrator. She's my favorite character in the entire series, absolutely 100. percent But I've always had that theory that Littlefinger is actually the good guy. In it, so. I'm all with that. I could go with that. I'm with <laughs> it. I love it. I love Littlefinger. He's clearly one of my favorite characters. I mean, it's one of my favorite characters of all of literature, to be honest. But he's so in depth and so good. Yeah, well, Tim Franco, don't put that evil on us. Don't don't do that. Don't put. Don't that say evil. that. Don't put the evil on us. I love you, Tim, but you can't say that because no. he's got. To get I mean, he's got two more. So two more. I That's mean, a lot. Most <laughs> winner is going to come out next week anyway, right? So uh, yeah. <laughs> so, Andres, have you read the Forsaken chapter that's supposed to be in Winds of Winter? I have it. No, wait. I, I think I have. It's wait, remind an, me. It's an Aaron Greyjoy chapter. So it's Aaron Greyjoy no. after he's been captured. It's uh, it's his first chapter in Winds of Winter. It might actually be a little bit farther into the book, but it's it's after Aaron has been captured by Euron, and it's it's a deep, 
fuck, it's my favorite chapter. If if that chapter gets published the way that it is, it will be my absolute favorite chapter in the entire series because Davos 3 in in uh, Dance is my favorite. The whole um, fucking Wolf's Den, <laughs> Hoff Manderley shit. Like, that's my, that's my shit. North remembers, man. But the Forsaken chapter, I will send you a link. I will find it and I will send oh, it. Oh, yeah. Please do. It. It's amazing. It really deep dives into a lot of lore into the entire series. I'm sorry. The Danny Rat. I'm sorry. No, totally okay. I can talk about this shit all day long. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we'll get into more of it. But uh, oh my goodness! <laughs> going back to Schmodown real quick before we hit, I think it's almost time for this or that. But going back into Schmodown, I gotta say, I always ask this question for people because it kind of makes me think of nothing. Is there any? If you couldn't have been with Winston, if you had to pick another squad to be on, who would oh, you? Oh man, been? I feel like this is sacrilegious. <laughs> <laughs> Apple like, I don't know if I'm allowed to, because right? if I say anyone's name, I'm sure I'll hear it from my faction. <laughs> uh, I know Winston is around, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a great question, man. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm actually, and I know I might surprise some people, but I'm actually very partial to uh, Roxy. Uh, again, going back to the After Buzz days, I've known Roxy forever. Right. Uh, and it's one of those things where I've seen her grow and I've seen her career grow and knowing who she is behind the scenes. Uh, she's so cool and supportive and kind uh, and a go-getter and passionate. I would probably, would probably go with Finstock. Now play. <laughs> uh, no, I'd probably go with her. I'd go with her. <laughs> You're going to talk about the worst. If I was a free agent, I guess. And, and if, if Winston was off the board for some reason. Yeah. Sabrina was on Roxy's uh, show earlier today. Good answer. Sabrina was on Roxy's show earlier today, and Sabrina kept referring to you as Andres. And Roxy was like, you call him that? <laughs> and she was just <laughs> cracking up at that so much. I thought it was hilarious. Yeah. Um, it, back to the good old days of Ace. Uh, shout out to 2015 Comic-Con. I don't know if uh, <laughs> people remember that, but that's when we got to hang out quite a bit. It was, uh, it was a group of us. Uh, Tom was actually there, too. Uh, but we all hanged out a lot, and it was Roxy was a part of the crew, so that's where we got to know each other. It was fun, yeah. She's uh, she's cool. Yep. So. Okay. Roxy yeah. is very much in contention for manager of the year. I feel like she is all the time, but she's doing a great job. I love to watch her manage, and um, you know, Winston is kind of a, a sneak a sneak pick in that. I think he's doing a great job as well. Winston's a boss. Like like I'm I'm here to gas him up, but I'm gonna gas him up right now. All the hype, like all the hype, man. Winston deserves it. He's he's both really smart and supportive, and he's able to give me tips and advice and set me up with people and really be there to be like, hey, man, this is you. Uh, and that's that's the best, honestly. Like, he's great. And obviously, uh, Kate. I mean, obviously, Kate's doing really well. And I recently saw her on, on Darina's uh, dance stream. I don't know if you guys tuned into that. She's yes! A She's a pro dancer. Like, I'm talking pro level dancer. Yeah. <laughs> he crushed it, man. It was so good to see her. Uh, Kate was Kate came on Chill to Action um, a few weeks ago, and she was actually the very first episode where we broke a thousand views. No way. And that's yeah. correct, Paul, right? Yeah, we saw you. She was the highest of the time. She's yeah. the time that you brought She's a hoot and a holler, man. Love Kate so much. That's great. <laughs> I would love to meet her. I haven't had the chance, if I'm being honest. So, uh, oh, she's a sweetheart. Yeah, just seeing her go off, I was like, man, she's like low key, like a J Lo backup dancer. Like, she is good. Like, she can be in music videos. Like, it was amazing. I just love seeing that and knowing that she's in the Schmodown and killing it. So it's yeah. even better. Winston, also a fellow Texan, so you know we got a rep like that. There you go. There you go. Winston's actually bring back Winston. I think you're right. Winston is a sneaky, sneaky pick, because especially how far he's come. I remember when he was announced there, he didn't have a, a stellar playing career for example you never but then like he was asked like what he was looking for and it's kind of he made these he's looking for more characters and what fit in his personalities and yet he's being the perfect mouthpiece he's just got he's being there for his players he's got this really supportive vibe he's got some humorous aspect keeping you guys loose like his his little thing with roxy that he proposed with the uh giving her the l yeah was, it was great, great. It was great. Yeah, so i can't wait to see what he has to do next too so oh, good i love that. yeah it's a blast. I mean, obviously, uh, for the Parker match, we had a lot of fun. I, I was texting him about ideas as far as what we can do with the promo uh, for the entrance. Uh, and, and, yeah, it was a great combination of us just kind of uh, putting our head together and trying to have fun, which is, I think we accomplished at least that. <laughs> at least in the beginning. 
<laughs> that was a low key one. I actually like that part. That was actually pretty fun. Low key one of my favorite uh, promos in the beginning for that because it was very spot on. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you got the timing, good timing with that. So, well, is it time, Danny? Should we go into? Uh... It is. Before we go into the th this or that, I'm so sorry, Paul. I do want to point out that we have a Streamlabs. Oh, uh, okay. Yes, a Streamlabs sent in from Justin Hamilton. Big shout out, Justin. Uh, donated a dollar. Mm -hmm. Man, Ace. Ace is the first guy we interviewed on the Let's Get Ready podcast. Yeah, uh, that's right. Yeah, the joy and smile he gets talking about Star Wars is exactly why it will never die. It's about being here. It's about being here and now in the coronavirus, but yet we can and now in the coronavirus, but yet we can escape to a galaxy far, far away and be 13 again. Absolutely, Justin. Yes. Thank you so much. Justin's for that. great. I love Justin. Uh, he stood out to me quite a bit when we did that interview, and I was like, oh, this is cool. <laughs> no, really, yeah. They're doing right. a great job at the Let's Get Ready. So big shout out to them. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it, it's one of those things where when you're when you're in high school and you're the nerdy kid back in my high school era. Uh, now it's cool. But back in my era, it wasn't cool. Uh, so what I meet cool dudes like him and obviously like Makuga, for example, who uh, who's a, a genuinely a friend of mine and a really cool guy. I'm just like, man, I want to be cool. I want to be like that guy. So, <laughs> he's one of them. Yeah. All right. Well, it's time for This or That, which uh, if you haven't seen our show before, everybody, is where I'm going to give Ace to uh, things. It could be anything that I want, really. Um, he gets to decide between them. He can ask for clarification. He could just go off in any direction he'd like. It's really up to him. So without further ado, we always start with this question. Uh, I'm wondering if explanation might be needed. I don't know. We'll have to see. Hopefully, I, I don't know if an explanation. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not, but we'll go with it. This is one, there's one right answer on this podcast. There's only one right answer on this one, so. That's a lot of pressure. Yeah. Yes. Are you team guy, team Andrew guy, or are you team trader? Oh man, that's a that's a lot. <laughs> that's a loaded question. Uh, <laughs> only one right answer: guy or trader? Uh, uh, can I say trade? <laughs> Uh, to trader. <laughs> right, in your future endeavors, and uh, we'll have. It was great having you on the show, and we'll have right. you. <laughs> Hey guys, have a good night. No, play. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's fine. All right, we'll let it slide. We'll allow it. We'll allow it. We'll let go. <laughs> we just got to put you on the left side of of the of our yeah. spreadsheet now. So very good side. Sorry, guys. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. All uh, right. How about we know you've been talking about the, doing the last dance reviews for the the, the, the oh yeah oh yeah well, when yeah. you to the last one that you did with JT on it, it was very good. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I love talking about basketball. I don't understand why people underestimate Scottie Pippen. I've been saying this for fucking years. Like, I'm not the biggest. Like, I can't scuba dive into basketball. I can snorkel into basketball, but I've been a Scottie Pippen fan for a very long time. So, so good. I, I can go off about Scotty. So, <laughs> there you okay, go. I'm sorry, Paul. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Go ahead. So, let's do the age old question now Jordan or uh -huh. LeBron? Yeah. So, this is something that's obviously all over ESPN right now. And it's a big right. conversation. Uh, honestly, Jordan, and, and I've said it for years now, it's not just a documentary that's talking to me. I know the legend that is Michael Jordan. I really feel like he is beyond a special athlete. He's just a special human. Um, obviously, LeBron, what differentiates the two is obviously LeBron's size mm -hmm. and LeBron's passing. I, I, I mean, if you look at the NBA, even this year, if the NBA season ended now and they canceled it, the leader in assist is LeBron James. Yeah. It, look it up on Google right now. That's a big deal. The fact that he's able to turn into almost a Magic Johnson type guy while at the same time being one of the best finishers ever makes LeBron James clearly one of the greatest of all time. But still, Michael Jordan is the best. I got that. There's a, um, I just want to touch on that really quickly. Like there's, there's a legacy that uh, Ace. I know that you and I are close to the same age. Um, growing up in the '90s, the L Michael Jordan was something else and just something different. And um, you, you know, '90s kids, even if you weren't into basketball or anything like that, it didn't matter if you were into sports or not. You knew who Michael Jordan was, and it wasn't just because of Space Jam or anything like that. It all, he just transcended into a lot of different things, especially into like I've I've been like fucking been into sneakers but here's another thing from my show. oh nice i've been a sneakerhead for a very very long time 
Who's so, whose uh, shoe size is that? No, I'm playing. Whose shoes? <laughs> no, I I used to work at Foot Locker. I used to be a manager for Foot Locker. Oh. Yeah. So I used to be a manager at Foot Locker. So I have a lot. This is actually my favorite shoe ever, and this is why I have them. It's my Air Max 97. Yo. I to it, but I I've been a sneakerhead for a very long time, and um, LeBron's like LeBron has done that, and I love LeBron way more than I love Jordan as a person, just because what LeBron does for for the community and different things like that. There's certain things that Michael Jordan never did for the community, but when it comes to uh, pop culture overall, Michael Jordan I feel like has always had the bigger impact into it. And um, that just from that perspective, not not alone, just from the sports perspective of it, but like from pop culture, I feel like yeah. Michael Jordan definitely changed, completely changed the game. Like LeBron wouldn't have sneakers the way that he does if it wasn't for Michael Jordan, and and pop culture wouldn't be where it is if it wasn't for Michael Jordan in that time. So I I definitely agree with you on that sort of thing. And I think when it comes to basketball, I'm more on the LeBron side than the Michael Jordan side. But overall, MJ. All right, fair enough, fair enough. Sorry, I ranted. I almost put, I almost put the timer up for you. I know. So we have this thing. I do, I do this thing called Danny Rant. Like, if you get me talking about a subject that I'm into, I just oh, wow. fucking stop. Ball has a timer. Yeah. Yeah, let's go like this. Let's start counting down. <laughs> <laughs> That's all meaning of podcast, by the way. It's just me <laughs> ranting. If anyone ever listens, I'm sorry ahead of time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, everyone. I will just drop in my basketball real quick and say that I have to throw. I was a Larry Bird guy myself growing up because I was a Boston. Yeah. Guy. So we'll go with that. There you go. Oh, man, I wanted to say something else, but we don't have to. All right. Uh, we'll go. Okay. How about this? Uh, this is a questions come up in the Action Army podcast now. As far as grilled cheese, do you put butter on it? Oh, my God. Or do you put mayo on it to grill it? Oh, man. Uh, I feel like it's a wrong answer either way. <laughs> um, Have you ever heard I, of this before? I I I have it. Okay. Okay. My I, thing is, isn't it butter? Isn't it? <laughs> that's what I said. The post butter. With our sweet, lovely co-host Miss Alex Shashek and and her sweet, darling husband Lucas Shashek. Always fuck and other people in the fucking general's chat, y'all. This is this drives me insane. I'm so sorry. I do not like mayonnaise. I have a just do not and oh really? And so but there's this thing <laughs> where you toast it with mayonnaise. Like you're so like whenever you grill the grilled cheese, you put the mayonnaise on the front side and it's supposed to taste better. I don't know. I hate this question. <laughs> yeah, my, my thing is like Torture. what if you yeah, I mean, obviously, I, I feel like butter is the correct answer. But yeah. either way, if you put like a, a tiny bit of butter and add like a tiny bit of mayonnaise, I'm always at the why not both one. <laughs> why, not <laughs> why, not why not both? Why not both? Yeah. I can't see that being good. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. That was for you. That was for you, Alex. We wanted to get that yeah. in there for her. Uh, okay. Moving on. How about Kylo Ren or Anakin Skywalker? Oh man. Oh, that's a tough one. This is a real tough one. The other ones weren't as tough, but this one. They get a little hard. Um, so if you say Anakin though, I, if I can keep in Clone Wars in there too, you can do it. Right? He's a kind of incredible character, right? I mean, and he also has the Ahsoka connection. He has the chosen one connection, but I, I mean, obviously, I've wrote I wrote about Kylo Ren, and I feel like he's truly a special character. Uh, oh man! All right, just just because of my prequel fans out there, I'm gonna go Anakin, but okay. it's it's closer than people think. It is. You know, I I would think exactly the same way. Anakin is the chosen one, but Kylo Ren did have a great great arc. I want to see more of him, but I'm so oh. sorry. I have to let my dog out. I'm so sorry. That's okay. We'll keep going. Hopefully, we'll get more of him in a in some kind of expanded version cartoon. Oh yeah, I would love speaking of that. I would love to see a post uh, Jedi Luke Skywalker Kylo Ren animated series. Like kind of like, Ooh. The, like yeah, like, yeah. That could be really even awesome. even if it's not. I mean, I've heard that before. I've heard people say that. But what about live action series? <laughs> oh, yeah. I was a young around, Kylo. I was getting around the recast. A young Ben. Young Ooh, who would you cast as a young Ben Skywalker? Who would you got? Oh, that's an no, wait, solo. It's Ben Solo, not Skywalker. Solo, yeah, yeah, solo. I don't, I don't know. I have no idea. I do not want Did that question. Know? No. <laughs> I 
I went animated only because you could have Mark Hamill do the voice to feel closer. That's the only reason I've got to go animated. But yeah. I think both ways could be cool, though. So, all right. Um, I'm going to get you in trouble here. Okay. I'm going to tell you that right now. So, RB3 or Sabrina? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing that. <laughs> Why not? This is a forfeit on, on my part. I love both. <laughs> yeah. Why not both? I, I I love both of my my co-hosts so much, and they're the best. And each of them brings something unique and individual into the meaning of podcast and into life in general. For crying out loud, they're superstars. Uh, I always say, if you listen to First Cut or the Meaning of, that they're like my my star players on my team and I'm just a point guard. I'm just there to pass the ball. Um, there's my basketball reference for you guys, but that's how I see myself as like a, a point guard there to just feed them the ball and they shoot the threes. They dunk the ball. I pass them the alley-oop and then they Zion Williamson um, all over the place. So Pelicans, yeah. okay, baby. That is the correct answer. So that's probably that's, that's 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 a great way to put it. I really love that you put it in that perspective. That's, that's really nice. Going back to basket, basketball, that was me giving the, Giving the pass to do the layout for him. Kobe. <laughs> there you go. Uh, we actually had a stream lab of this or that thrown in there by Jake Acavetta. This or that, and this is a good one because actually I was going to ask this later on, but playing Robert Parker in your geekdom or playing Alex Damon in Star Wars. <laughs> oh, okay. Ooh. Um, maybe because my confidence is higher right now in Star Wars, I'm going to say I'd rather play Alex. Uh, oh. Yeah. And and obviously all credit to Robert Parker, who I've ranted about and how great he is uh, on my podcast and on other episodes uh, on on the Let's Get Ready podcast too. I talked about how great he is, but at the same time, part of it has to do with my knowledge in Star Wars and other things that it's not as high in other areas and in inner geekdom. Even though I still feel like I can keep up, um, but Robert Parker is the real deal, man. He's the real deal. Yeah, <laughs> he definitely showed it. Sweet baby Parker. Yes, I, I got, I'm trying to break hearts and earn friendship, supposedly. Yep. And I That's guess I, I am a heel commentator. Did, <laughs> did that, that ever come clear on show? Like that's like the face and the heel. Did no one ever catch that connection? The whole time it's been that way. But <laughs> all right, how about this? Uh, the Cassian Andor series or the Obi Wan series? Oh. see now, now you're really pushing it. <laughs> Welcome. Here's, this or that. <laughs> here's my here's my thing. Um, obviously, I'm super excited about the Cassian Andor series, but personally, I've been a part of that little Star Wars group that's been ranting about you and McGregor's Obi Wan Kenobi since it came out. Like Obi Wan is my favorite character, and you is one of my favorite best parts of that right i mean obviously alec brought his own style but the character really grew through ewan and ewan's version obviously uh clone wars isn't necessarily ewan um but at the same time it's still his character and i think people mistake the idea of like oh we've seen obin well before because i've heard that argument quite a bit too my thing is like not ewan's we, we've seen we've seen Ewan's in in a, in a couple movies in the prequels but not his live action character in a, in a show or in a series or in a movie, uh, which is something that I've been wanting forever. Ewan McGregor, Obi-Wan is my favorite Star Wars character of all time. I love Ewan McGregor just in general. Yeah, he's incredible. Yeah. Like he just can't he's so it. good in Doctor Sleep. So I mean, good. Yes. yes. Uh, yeah. Right? And that was such an underrated movie. People slept in the outfit. Yeah. Big fish as well. Yeah, I think people totally slept on Doctor Sleep last year. I was I was one of my favorite. Same. I I loved that book and I loved what they did with the movie. Um, it they just I'm I'm not going to go into a Danny rant. Um, <laughs> McGregor did a wonderful job in that movie. Uh, as soon as I heard that he was cast to play Danny Torrance, instantly I was yes, fuck yes, you got it, you did it. Congratulations. So, so I good. love that movie and that book. It's great. I'm all been going Cassian Andor. I think that's the hotter take, and that's good. I mean, I'm I'm happy for I guess. Cassian's amazing. I One of my favorite Star Wars characters, mm -hmm. especially when he has uh, Alan Tudyk with him as well. Yeah, K no. K2 is amazing uh, too. He's a great character. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, and yes, you is a beautiful man. It's very true. It's very true. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, how about I'll throw some more at you, Tyrion Lannister or Jamie Lannister? 
Oh, get ready for a hot take from me. Oh, oh, <laughs> because I've been talking about Jamie Lannister My same take. forever. Yep. I've been, I've, it, go listen to Casterly Talk. Jamie Lannister is one of my favorite Game of Thrones characters, characters in general. I love Jamie Lannister. His backstory, the idea of, of killing the Mad King, of having that pressure, but at the same time being the hero and never getting recognized for it and always I, being hated. Oh, man. <laughs> Jamie Lannister, even though Tyrion's amazing, but Jamie, Jamie for me. Tyrion is a cool character, but here's the thing. Tyrion's also an evil character, and that's very much coming into these next books to where you can definitely see those. I mean, I don't He's know. Selfish. She's a selfish character. Are you just trying to deny this? Because don't be in denial about Tyrion Lannister, because there's been a lot of, like, if you look at anything that he talks about Penny, like the 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 other little person that's with him in that specific space where he's at in uh, Dance with Dragons. <laughs> Time is up. Over. <laughs> you, no, I, that's fine. That's, I, just, I, 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 I would just say he's more. Okay. No, it's Jamie Lannister. Yes, you're right. You're Lannister. Right. Okay, let's go with that. Uh, a little food question. We, we, I got to tell the Action Army, we're always about food. So we always have a lot of food debates. Yeah, uh, we loaded do. fries or poutine? Say the first one again. I loaded fries. fries. Loaded fries, like bacon and cheddar cheese. and Yeah. <laughs> Loaded <laughs> fries, right? That's right. Uh, <laughs> I feel like that's the correct answer. It is definitely the correct yeah, yeah, answer. For me. Loaded fries are great, but poutine, cheese curds, and gravy, and potatoes. Okay. How about live-action Disney movies that are coming out? Hercules or Mulan? Oh, oh, well, here's it's it's tougher for this one, right? Because we've seen the trailer, we've right? seen a ton of footage for Mulan, so we know what we're getting. Mm -hmm. We don't know what we're getting with Hercules live action, so I feel like this one's a little tougher. Um, if I'm being you know, what's funny, these two happen to be two of my probably top five Disney animated movies ever. Oh, Mulan know. is number two for me, Aladdin's my favorite, oh, but I, I would probably go. Yeah, I'd probably go Aladdin, Mulan, and, and Hercules is up there. I'd probably put it as three or four. So that's a good question. Um, just based off based off what I like, I would say Mulan. Because I feel like that, that pitch to me is one of the best Disney live action pitches in a while. Versus the other ones might have been a bit repetitive. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what your guys' opinions are on the Disney live action ones. But for me, the best pitch is like, hey... It's a warrior lady who goes undercover to save her family yep. and ends up kicking so much ass. I'm just like, yeah, I want to see this Chinese epic film. Yeah, count me in. So for yeah. me, it's Mulan. Absolutely, 100%. And regardless, if they're not having the Mushu element inside of it, there's still a lot of things that they're taking from it. Like with that, when that sorceress turns into the little eagle, that like that's from the fucking cartoon. And so that magical element is still there. And I'm super. Only thing, Mulan happens to be all time soundtrack for me. Yeah. I know every single one of those songs by heart. Like, Make a Man Out of You is my anthem. I, uh, I got to see Donnie and Marie in Las Vegas, and Donnie, uh, Donnie sang that song. Why can't I think of their fucking last name? Donnie Osmond sang that song at that show. That was oh, the, the best Las Vegas show that I, I've seen like three. That was the best Las Vegas show that I've ever seen. Donnie and Marie, it was my fucking favorite. And he did I'll Make a Man Out of You. And it was beautiful. <laughs> it's it's the one song that I literally go full musical mode every time I'm watching the movie. I will get up and start dancing and start singing along. Uh, don't get me started now. Yeah. Let's get down. No, I'm playing. Um, <laughs> Turn into you're the saddest man. No. Um, but either way, I, yeah. Mulan's incredible. That soundtrack is incredible. Perfect. 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 Uh, let's see. I got two or three more. Um, I do this one a lot, but I kind of always want to hear somebody's answer on this. Han Solo or Indiana Jones? Got go. I love Indy. I love him. I really do. But Han, just because of my Star Wars first love, even though I also grew up with Indy and I also love Indiana Jones, and those are kind of movies that my family and I have been watching for years. But Han is just legendary. Get that? I completely get that. It's funny, I get a lot of different questions, a lot of different answers to that from very passionate answers, a lot of different uh, answers on that. But I get that. I go with Han as well myself, but 
Uh, I can tell you after I watched an Indiana Jones movie, though, I might switch it up. Though. It's that close to me. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I have my own Danny rant for Crystal Skull, but that's not for here. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, all right. We'll end up with this one. One and more. I think tougher ones for you as well, uh, based on what we've talked about already. One more last Star Wars one. Clone Wars or Rebels? Oh, see, this one I've heard before, and it's actually really hard, <laughs> right? Because here's the thing. Clone Wars lets us dive into characters that we already love or I already love, for example, right? I mean, to me, Clone Wars gave me more you and Obi-Wan, gave me more Anakin, it gave me Ahsoka. It gave me uh, one of the best storylines I've ever seen when it comes to the clone troopers and their growth and their progression as characters. Um, and Padme, my God, Padme is one of the best Star Wars characters ever. And it gave us more Padme, which I feel like is, is clearly one of the most underrated Star Wars characters because a lot of people overlook her in the prequels. Yes. Um, but in the Clone Wars, she's like the biggest badass in the show. Um, and at the same time, Rebels... <laughs> Uh, has Hera, which is also legit, one of my favorite all-time Star Wars characters. Uh, Wendy Lee and I have bonded over our, our mutual love for Hera. Oh. I think Hera is like the epitome of peak uh, Star Wars leaders uh, and, and pilots. Yeah. Uh, and Sabine is incredible. Kanan made me cry. <sighs> uh, it's it's tough, man. Um Purely based off what I already said about Obi Wan, I'll probably go Clone Wars. Okay, I get that. Yeah, that's a good point. Sean Sullivan brings up actually, it's either all of Rebels or the best bits of Clone Wars because Clone Wars has more lows, but it also has highs that are way higher. And I get that aspect. Can of it. can I say go on? Clo Rebels is the slightly better show in my opinion. I know I'm sacrilegious with that. I still feel like Rebels might be the better show, but if I had to choose my favorite, I'd probably still go Clone. Wars. Makes if sense. that makes sense. No, it doesn't make sense. I mean, that's something too. I think I have to lean towards Clone Wars myself only because I like the Clone Wars representation of Hondo and Naka a little better than in Rebels. I love Hondo. I think Hondo's a great character. <laughs> I'm going to go with Clone Wars also because that's the only one that I've seen. <laughs> I finished Clone Wars. I was super late at night, a couple of glasses of wine deep, and I tweeted, I'm going to name my firstborn Rex. <laughs> oh, wow. What a name. <laughs> <laughs> They're like from Toy Story? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. After a dinosaur. Exactly. Uh, all right, well, that's where we will end this or that. So thank you for that. Uh, we'll get into, uh, we have some Streamlabs already. Yeah. Super Chats already. This is the time now if you want to ask any questions. Uh, put that, we'll put that link in the chat. Jake will put that link, or Kelsey will put that link in the chat there. Uh, Streamlabs.com slash it's call to action podcast. Call to action podcast. I always forget if it's a pod or podcast, but call to action podcast. Yeah. Uh, get those questions in now. Um, I'll read a few of the ones we got, but for, before we do that, we'll do our plugs, Danny. You want to do the plugs first, Danielle? That's right. Uh, uh, <laughs> the plugs are bad for me at this moment because now all of a sudden I can't think of what's going on. Uh, but this Wednesday coming up on Schmobates, I'm super pumped about that one. Uh, it's um, if you haven't heard about Schmo Beats, is where we basically do movie fights that are Schmodown related. And uh, this week on Wednesday, it's going to be myself up against Brandon Buckingham, General Brandon Buckingham, Buck. and we are going to be uh, debating over best action team action moments i believe is what it is i don't know 100 percent. alex likes to keep it low for her competitors i know that she said it but she doesn't really give us the details until about the day of so we can get our, our arguments settled and all of that good stuff so i'm looking forward to that so you can catch me on there on wednesday and you can catch that every wednesday on the call to action podcast alex does a great fucking job with schmo baits she gets a lot of actual schmo down competitors that compete with that so always make sure that you check us out on Wednesdays at 9.30 Central, I believe, uh, is the time that that usually goes live. So go ahead and check that out. And then, uh, Paul, really quickly, uh, remind me who we have coming on next week for Chill Action. Okay. Well, actually, we have a couple. We still have a couple weeks out. We uh, have two weeks scheduled at this point. Next week, we are bringing on the wonderful, the talented, and behind the scenes, Eric Rodriguez, Nerd Chronics. And that Oh, great. Discuss the background or anything. I like to speak all things of the promo, the best promo man in the biz. Um, and then the, the week after that, we have the man who is in the chat, at least at some point, Tim Franco. Tim the Tank is going to come on uh, on call on Chill to Action. So those are two good shows in a row. 
Also, that next that Monday with Tim Franco is actually my birthday Monday. Ooh. So, yes. Uh, the big three three, y'all. So come in and hang out in the chat with us because we will I will have like a birthday thing for that. So it'll be fun. Uh, and real quick, Robert Adams wants you to know that make sure you undercut everything Brandon says by reminding him that Whataburger is great. It's I feel like it's unfair to for like I've been a part of Action Army since day one. So what the, I have all of the arguments and <laughs> and Danny Rant is a, is a real thing. So <laughs> I was made for Schmobates. <laughs> perfect. perfect. Uh, and that's it. Of course, we have we'll have call live next week as well. Uh, uh, so that's where our plugs for this week are. Uh, let's go into uh, the stream labs and the super chat. Uh, I'm going to super chat if I can put that on screen first. Since that's <laughs> all, there, it is, there it is. Oscar Romo back. He's not giving me any questions in Spanish this time, luckily, so I can actually read it. Do you have a favorite moment or moments in Star Wars to get you emotional? Myself, Leia at the end of Rogue One, and spoiler alert, Twilight of the Apprentice, which, yes, I think. Oh, God. I don't know what Twilight of the Apprentice is. It is an episode in Rebels. Oh. Ooh. Good. Good moment. Uh yeah. I mean, there's a lot, if I'm being real. There's a ton that I feel like I get emotional. Um what can I say without spoiling a segment in Rebels? Uh it's someone's never mind, I'm not gonna say it. I just don't want to spoil it. <laughs> the, final the final season? It is the final season. Yeah. It's a certain moment in the final season featuring a certain Jedi. Uh, doing something pretty incredible uh, and allowing during everyone. A escape, during a great escape. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, that actually made me tear up quite a bit. Um, in the films, I'm going to go to the sequel trilogy. Uh, uh, I've been vocal about how I, I cried every time I watched The Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> uh, and I saw it like four or five times in theaters. Um, and every time the same bits of the movies would make me cry. Uh, a lot of it with Ray, um, which which is a big is a big part of it, and uh, especially towards the end, uh, the trio hugging together, uh, Chewie getting Han's medal, um, the uh, rise moment of her getting up and hearing all the Jedi makes me tear up every single time. I just um, rewatched that. I just watched that movie last night before I went to bed, so it's very fresh in my mind. And I that scene particularly, like I had to go and like re I, every time that scene comes on, I need to read every single Jedi that is in there, and it's my favorite. Yeah, and and f same with Force Awakens. Uh, the very end of the Force Awakens when Luke is there and he pulls off the hood, it's it makes me cry. Mm -hmm. uh yeah so many great moments there i'm a very tearful guy i'm a very emotional dude i will cry <laughs> i cry at commercials and this one cries at that one cries no. at that. <laughs> and on, on commercial i cried on the, the the paper is folded in a way that someone appreciates it oh my god that's so beautiful i'm surprised she hasn't cried tonight so far at some point i am i'm a crier i'm, I'm a big crier. that's all right we love it, i blame dude. all of the disney movies i'm a big disney fan so i blame all of that Yes. Okay. Uh, let's see. All right. Stream live from earlier on today. Uh, A Torres donated five. Says, "Hey guys, Ace, what do you think of having an anime division in the in the Schmodown? Also, A Feast of Crows is one of my favorite books. What do you guys think of the how the, those characters were treated in the show and the characters that were cut, like Ariane Martel?" Ooh, don't get me started on that. <laughs> That's a two-hour podcast. Yeah. My mind right there. Woo! Uh, yikes. Big yikes. I, I can write papers on that, books on that, for crying out loud. I've Just the idea of, of I don't know. I, I really do feel like D&D, &D, and I call them D&D, &D, um, the creators of the show, really missed the mark on the whole Dorn angle, which happens to be one of my favorite stuff in the book, too. Okay. Um, and obviously features the Red Viper, my boy, uh, the Mandalorian himself. Oh, Grand Martel, uh, that's right. And what was the, the first question? It was about me. Actually, I didn't want to. I'm sorry. That's okay. I did too. It's, I lost it too. One second. Let me get back up to where it was. Oh, I just lost it in here. Yeah. Oh, oh, it was an anime oh, division. Anime division in Schmodown. Anime division in Schmodown. Here's my thing about, I've heard this before. Here's my thing about an anime division. Anime, a lot of people watch anime films, mm -hmm. no doubt. However, it's not as popular as anime series. For example, Boku no Hero, uh, Attack on Titan, 
any kind of those animes that are currently happening now, Demon Slayer, those are the kind of animes that people are watching and that has a lot of fans. When it comes to anime films, they tend to be a little bit more uh, not as popular, I guess you can say. The biggest one is Your Name, which came out like three, four years ago uh, and had a big US release. But other than that, the only other anime films that make big splashes are Miyazaki uh, or a live action Dragon Ball Z. I mean, not a live action, an, an anime film Dragon Ball Z or an anime film My Hero Academia, which has happened, obviously. Um, so it's tougher to do an anime film division. If it was an anime series division, that's like a whole different story. Huh? I have a quick question. Um, did you, I, I, this is an obvious question, I feel like, did you watch the very first Pokemon movie that came out? I didn't. You have not? No, I'm not. I'm not the biggest Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm a Digimon stan. A Digimon stan. <laughs> stan. My um, cousins, uh, my cousins were very big into Pokemon, so they got me into Pokemon, and I watched that very first movie and uh, the whole Pikachu Ash scene at the end. Anyone who knows knows. Oh yeah, I do know. Broke, that. broke me like it still yeah. breaks me today. So that's that's and Miyazaki films are I'm super into all of those are beautiful. So that's that's where I'm at with anime. Perfect. Okay. Um, we do have a couple others in here. Let's see. Uh, Sean Sullivan. Thank you, Deshaun, for donating. Uh, you guys have a stream lab now. We do, actually, Sean. That's great. I push you for that. We actually made a 1,000 subscribers, and we decided to go all in. Um, sorry, I haven't been watching as much. Sean, we get it. It happens. It's all Busy. Good. Studying, bud. Exactly. We love you in here anyway, Sean. Exactly. In here anytime. And Jill. Fucking love Jill. That's true. Uh, so, uh, so, Ace, I'm sorry we didn't get a chance to really meet at that last taping, but I wanted to wish you luck against Josh Cuvedo and Knapsack. I'll be waiting for you in round two. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. I obviously would love to meet, and I will be there. <laughs> I will be in the final. Uh, how, really quickly, how do you feel if you uh, if you beat Josh Guevara in this, you play Ken Napsok? Right. That's got to be kind of intimidating. Oh, believe me, that stood out quite a bit. <laughs> uh, personally, just because I've, I've obviously counseled our council connection, our four center connection. Uh, yeah, I, I would love that. Yes, that I'm looking forward to that. I, 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 that well, I mean, I can't look, can't look past Josh. I don't know anything about Josh, but I would like to see you versus Ken. That'd be a great, great matchup. Um, okay, uh, let's see anything else. Uh, little warrior donated. A little warrior uh, beef or chicken tamales. Oh my gosh. Mm, can I can I give the most basic answer and say chicken? <laughs> <laughs> There's no problem have with that. Ever, have you ever had deer? No. No? Okay. Deer deer tamales are, are actually pretty good. The worst tamales are bean. If anyone ever tries to argue bean tamales are, are the best tamales, then you got another thing coming, but yeah. We're big meat guys. <laughs> Us Latinos. There you go. There you go. Uh Oh, Danny Coast, our own Danny Coast. Uh, can he give his thoughts about the live action Cowboy Bebop and Avatar The Last Airbender? What other anime would you like to see? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if you guys know about this, but Netflix is trying to do a, a an anime push. And obviously you could see it now with Castlevania. You could see now with Beast Wars, Beast, Beast Stores. I forget that the name of that anime. That's the one that RB3 loves and I didn't get into. Um, but they're trying really hard to make original anime and to green light it i've read an article actually a couple years ago that said that netflix bought a couple anime studios in japan and in south korea in order to kind of keep the anime industry alive and, and it's it's kind of interesting because netflix is almost single-handedly keeping the anime industry alive so now they're doing a live action cowboy bebop and a live action avatar but obviously the avatar one is like i love cowboy bebop it's one of my favorite all-time animes but i feel like you can do that story in, in live action because of the length of the story. For anyone who's familiar with Cowboy Bebop, it's only one season uh, and it's only one film or two films maybe um, versus Avatar The Last Airbender, which is three books and incredible arcs with characters that are almost timeless. So it's a little bit harder to do. Uh, I'm nervous. I'm nervous about Avatar. That's all I'm going to say. Um, I'm more confident in, in Cowboy Bebop. Wow. As long as there are corgis in there, then we're good. Oh, there's the corgi. Did you not see the video? I haven't. I haven't seen. I haven't Netflix seen. released a video saying that their first casting was Ayn. 
uh, Ayn, which is the corgi in, in the show. And they showed a video of Ayn meeting the rest of the cast. Um, <laughs> I'm going to grab Yeah, it. <laughs> I, I'm surprised you haven't seen it. Yeah, you no, can do, uh, YouTube it. There, I am. Totally. Yeah, so it's on YouTube. Uh, if you uh, type in like Cowboy Bebop live action Ayn, um, it'll probably come up. But it's essentially Ayn meeting the cast. Uh, and I love the cast, to be honest. I think the cast is great. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Oh, they have the cutest dogs. They do have the cutest butts. Tim Franco, Ace. Wow. Oh. Oh, boy. oh, damn. He's coming after me. Uh, I'm a I'm a Sun Devil graduate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. I'm I'm a I'm an ASU guy. I went to ASU. That's where I went to school. And then I moved out to LA. So clearly the Sun Devils, man. What are you doing in Tucson, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> All right, next up, Robert Adams. Love Robert. It's in a fanatic. Uh, what Studio Ghibli film would you recommend for someone who doesn't like anime? Oh, man. Uh, obviously, My Neighbor uh, is a big one. My Neighbor Totoro. Uh, Howl's Moving Castle. Um, what's another one? There's a I, few, but they're all, I, I think those two are kind of the big ones that you can kind of get into. I really, really enjoyed Princess Mononoke and uh, Spirited Away. I have those. Spirited Away. Yeah. It's one of my favorites. Uh, I know that it's not Miyazaki, but uh, Akira is also one of my mm. favorite, favorite favorites. I have that on Blu-ray as well. Yeah. And, and Ghost in the Shell is incredible too. Obviously the anime film and the series. Yeah. I haven't seen that one yet. I really want to. So good. Kelsey next. Oh, Robert Parker. Awesome. Parker. And we have tons of respect and props to Ace, one of the nicest, most approachable, genuine people in the MTS. Can't wait to see this take the Star Wars division by the Rancor, Rancor horns. <laughs> I like that. I like I that. that reference. We love, we love Robert Parker here. I, I I love Robert Parker. He's the best. And obviously one of the nicest dudes I met over there as well. They're all great people, but Robert really stood out to me. His sweetheart. Uh, Kelsey, next. Anything else? Dean Morgan, favorite Latino or Latina actor or actress? Ooh, that's a super tough one, considering there's a lot of ways to tackle this question, right? I mean, I could go Spanish speaker, mm -hmm. uh, Latino or Latinas. Um, I could go uh, Hollywood actors in, in America. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know everyone says it, but if I'm being honest, man, Diego Luna, is, he's the shit. Like people sleep on how good he is. He's so freaking good as an actor, just like in general. Uh, I, I, Gael is incredible. Um, who else? Who's a, I, I love Pedro. Uh, I'm naming all these Star Wars guys. I need to branch out. Um, Isa, Isa Gonzalez is one that's, that stands out to me. I think she's great. Uh, I think the girl who played the, the new Terminator was great too. Oh yes. Yes. Uh, uh Natalia Reyes. Yes, that's it. She was great. Um, great. I think she's great too. Very good. All right. I feel like mine is the same old, same old. It's like in Samo Hayek and Antonio Banderas. <laughs> <laughs> you got your classic. It's okay. There you go. Tim Franco again, Ace. Have you ever seen the anime Monster about the doctor who saves a child who grows up to be a serial killer? It's great. Ooh, I haven't seen this. No. Hmm. Interesting. I'll check it out. I know at some point somebody else in the chat can't find it now. Somebody asked if we had speaking spoken about vampires with you. Do you have a vampire? Oh, oh, thank you, whoever that is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, uh, I did hear that somewhere about vampires that you're really into vampires. I am a vampire. <laughs> There's a reason I look like this. I'm a vampire Phoenix Suns fan. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's something that it's it's always been my favorite character, mythology, world. Uh, I'm a vampire savant. Uh, I study it. I read it. I read the books. I seek it out. Uh, I write stories about it. Um, yeah, I love vampires. I love the vampire mythology. Uh, it's one of my favorite all-time stories in general so does that yeah. seem i gotta interject real quick does that seem a little ironic that a vampire is a fan of the sun ah uh, oh there you go i'm a day walker man i'm, I'm on that blade shit <laughs> <laughs> all right I'm yeah. gonna, what's your favorite vampire uh, franchise or median or whatever uh i'm gonna be pretty it's pretty simple but i've talked about this 
movie a million times. I even said it, shout out to Video Drew, on her episode saying that the movie I've seen the most, even like up there with Star Wars, because I've seen Star Wars the most, but if I've ever seen a movie the most and I love the movie more than any other movie besides Star Wars, it's Underworld, uh, which is now on Netflix. <laughs> All right. <laughs> There's a plug there. Uh, I've seen that movie probably like thousands of times. <laughs> yeah, I was just, uh, just going to ask yeah. about fucking Interview with the Vampire and if you bred Anne Rice, and that's all. Oh, there you go. There you go. Uh, I talked about True Blood in the chat as well. Great movie. I like True Blood quite a bit, actually. The, the Sookie Sackhouse novels, I know, are a little bit different than the TV. Different, actually. Yeah, so I've always been really interested into getting into those. My wife actually really likes watching True Blood because she has a big crush on uh, Skarsgård there. Whatever, mm. I can remember, whatever Scar, not the other, it's not a Skarsgård, but that's her boyfriend. If she could have. <laughs> so, uh, okay, last question again. Dean Morgan. Do you have a favorite moment being on the Schmoes No Show? Oh, that there's so many. And Dean, good job. Uh, by the way, can I give a little shout out to Dean Morgan just based on his name? Obviously, I've seen him around on chats and stuff, but Supernatural is one of my all-time favorite shows. Oh. Um, like I'm a I'm a Supernatural Stan fan. Like I literally will get the tattoo on my chest to protect me against demon possessions. Uh, it's a tattoo I'm planning to get. I'm being real. That's awesome. Um, yeah, so shout out to D Morgan for that. Uh, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> oh, favorite moment. Uh, the Mark Hamill moment was great. I don't know if you guys remember when Mark Hamill called in. I think that was an amazing moment. Uh, I remember that moment. Um, there's a lot of funny moments too in recent memory. Anything with Brett Sheridan is incredible. Um, his his rant about being a, a, an a hole on the internet is kind of great. Uh, there's the the Halloween episode. Uh, where we all dressed up, I thought it was a lot of fun. I dressed up as Vegeta. Okay. Um, it was that was a lot of fun. We did that. Um, it's uh, too many to count, man. So many great moments. I love being on that show. That's great. That's right. Yes, it's Luke. It's Luke, motherfucker. That is a classic. Yeah, that yeah. moment. I was there. <laughs> That's one of my favorite ones of all time as well. Um, but I didn't even know anything about Supernatural. That's very, I love I love Supernatural myself. It's one of my favorite series of all time as well. Uh, yeah, Paul, Paul could have found uh, a boy knew that. For that. <laughs> yeah, I, I did a Supernatural uh, a trivia thing at Phoenix Comic Con a couple years ago. That's the one trivia that I was like, all right, I can do this. I can keep up. I know Sam and Dean like the back of my hand. Uh, so that's, it's something that I've been following forever and shout All out right. to Tiffany Smith for being on the show. You know, I gotta throw it out the then I'll throw it, I'll throw it in a, a last minute, this or that Sam or Dean. Oh, it's, it's easy. It's Dean by a mile. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, everything from like season one, Dean to like the Mark of Cain, Dean, like demon Dean, like everything is just, I love Dean. I think my favorite, I just still throw it in my favorite part is when Dean, uh, sings air supply in the car. And if Stephanie, he does like the yeah. quiet, like oh, leave it. There's nothing else going to be on. And he starts singing. He starts singing. The <laughs> my my favorite uh, season three uh, when he's uh, I think it was Dean uh, or Sam when they're in prison and he's like, dude, you, you shot the sheriff and he's like, but I didn't shoot the deputy. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's a great. I show. love it, dude. Oh, and he's like, and he's like, too soon. And he's like, dude, yeah, like literally too soon. <laughs> I love it. Uh, well, I'm hoping so. I'm ho that's one of the things that Corona took from us. I'm hoping that they get to come back and finish the series uh, in the right way. As, uh, yeah. Big so. shout out to Texas boys, man. Yeah. Oh yeah, Austin, huh? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Well, love those guys. I believe. Oh, one more. Oh, no. <laughs> we're, we're gonna let Ace read that. Let's go, Roma. Um, uh... <laughs> Sorry to make you, you're getting all the stream labs that are in Spanish. Those are all going to go to you, bud. Okay. So he's saying, esto o aquello, which is this or that. Uh, MTS is movie trivia smowdown. Then his mas miedo means, who are you more afraid of? RB3 or Sabrina? I don't know if he means like trivia wise, like smowdown wise. I would assume that's what Austin Or like in life. <laughs> <laughs> the same or different oh, that's Like a, that if is someone point. was coming at me with a knife, who, who would I prefer? <laughs> um... That'd be tough too, but oh man, you know what's funny? I I think they're pretty, it's they're pretty evenly matched trivia wise. I feel, um, Ooh. I feel like they both have that love for classic movies. Uh, I know that uh, Sabrina has a love for foreign movies, same as RB three. 
uh, I have to be the one weird guy in the meaning of podcast who loves like, hey, let's talk about Marvel and DC. <laughs> and they're like, let's talk about this Italian filmmaker from the Eastern European. And I'm just like, oh, I mean, well, we can do Christopher Nolan. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they're both pretty equally matched, if I had to say. I will, I will say that anyone with the last name Ramirez is very definitely sure knows how to handle a knife. So There you go. That's true. Me too. So facing them in a match. That's what Oscar meant, I guess. How Got facing it. Sabrina Reserve. So there we go. Uh, yeah. Uh, I guess that will. That's the, all the questions, I believe, with Danny. So is that what we're, we're going to do? That is going to be it, y'all. We have been here. Uh, Andres, thank you so much. Hang out with us just a little bit more once we go off screen. Um, but a thank you to everyone inside of the chat, uh, everyone who hung out with us here tonight on Tilt Action. We definitely appreciate it. Uh, we love you, and we appreciate it. Paul. All right. Well, actually, Ace, where can the, where can the good kids find you? Oh, yeah. Obviously, uh, Twitter and Instagram at Squad Leader Ace, and subscribe to my YouTube channel, First Cut, our YouTube channel. It's RB3 and Sabrina and I. Uh, the Meaning of Podcast, we do episodes there. We do movie reviews. We just had Paul Oyama. Uh, yes. We had Mark Ellis on the show. We're going to have Danny Fernandez on the show. Oh. Uh, so tune in for that. That's coming out later this week. Oh, uh, yeah. Much. Subscribe to First Cut. Definitely. Absolutely. And it's not a joke this time. It's actually really mean it. Means yeah, I mean it. It's a show. <laughs> <laughs> so. well, uh, all the people find you, baby. Uh, at Paul underscore Denuzio on Twitter. You can find me on Chills Action every week. You can also find me on Class Action on Ben and Drew's Action Industries YouTube channel. Um, go check out last night's episode. We live streamed with Mark Riley, um, the tops, the ranking the Superman franchise, live action Superman franchise, which is a lot of fun. That was uh, very good. Thank you. I, appreciate I really it. enjoyed that show, man. It was fun. We had a lot, a lot to say. Um, and also, I opened my own YouTube channel recently called PLD Projects. Uh, got a lot of stuff coming out with that, uh, especially the Harris Stance, where I'm going to go through the entire filmography of Ed Harris, my favorite actor of all time. So there you go. That's right, y'all. You know me. It's your girl, Danielle. You can find me on Twitter at Danny Joy, D A N I E E J O Y. You can find me there. Uh, click on my name, Danielle Ramirez. You can find me on YouTube. I do have my own page coming up. Um, watch the book will come out this week. I promise. I guarantee it. I know I've delayed it a couple of weeks, but watch the book will definitely come out. Watch the book is where I analyze books and their movie adaptations and talk about the similarities and difference in between. And I also just talked to Paul about a recent new edition that I definitely will do on my channel because I definitely do really very much enjoy reading and I have very much enjoyed getting into this Star Wars franchise and everything in it. What I'm going to do is actually going to be a specific section called uh, the Padawan Chronicles uh, where I will be reviewing uh, Star Wars books and Paul will be off in the little corner saying whether I'm right or wrong. <laughs> so come and check that out um, and all of that good stuff thank you all so much for hanging out with us on this Monday thank you for tuning in to Chill to Action we will see you next week and for everyone at the Call to Action podcast thank you so much and as always we salute you bye